I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of me reacting to scary animations and maybe, you know, sharing my own personal experiences. I don't know what the series is going to be called. I don't think that I'm ever going to come up with a name for it. But you guys enjoyed the first two episodes, so here we are with episode number three. Hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this episode. We're going to start it right now. If you guys cool with that, you down with that. Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. Oh yeah, and shout out to Wansi Entertainment for allowing me to react to their videos with no copyright stuff. If you guys have any other channels that you personally like and want me to react to, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to hit them up and get some permission. But for the first video, we are going to check out True Explain video horror story animated i have no idea where this is gonna go i don't know if it's gonna be a I left was a turn. total video okay, game let me stop talking. i would play it from day till night of course my mom hated the fact that i always focused on games and not so much on the important stuff oh up top girl come on what you have two app updates available right now while i'm trying to record she would always hide my phone so that i wouldn't be able to use it okay this reminds me already of my own personal experience. Okay, so when I was younger, I loved to play video games. I would play it all night. I'd be waking up, I'd be so cranky. All I could think about was playing video games. It got so bad that my dad would take the modem so I would have no more internet access. He would take the modem, you know, where you just unplug all the stuff from the back and then take the physical modem. He would take that bitch with him to work. Bruh. So I would come home and then I would still have no internet. You know, I couldn't go on any browser. I couldn't talk to any of my friends. I didn't even have a cell phone back then. So that was the only way I could talk to people was online. And I couldn't go on the internet because he would take the modem with him to work and he would come home like at 6 p.m. So I was just sitting on my ball sack until he got home. But my dad doesn't know this, but he'll probably know now because he watches the videos. When he would take the modem, he would put it in the back seat of his car. Like he would put it under the seat in the back seat of the car. And we had an old modem that didn't even work anymore, but it was all black. So it kind of looked like the modem that we were using at the time. So what I would do when he fell asleep, I would open his car door because thank God he left it unlocked. I would open the car door, take out the working modem, put the fake ass modem that didn't even work anymore under his car seat. And then I would keep the modem with me in my room. So when he left for work and then, you know, I'd come back home, I actually had the working modem and then I would plug it back in, you know, you know, go on my websites, you know, do all the things that I wanted to do, play my video games. And then when I heard the garage open, I'd be like, oh shit. And then I'd take the modem off, I'd hide it back in the room. And then he'd bring back in the broken modem and then try to plug it back in. And then he'd always be like, you know, why doesn't this work? You know, why is it not connecting to the internet? And I'm like, let me check it out. So I'd swap it real quick again, have the working modem in there, put the broken modem in my room, and then repeat the same process every single night. So your boy was pretty slick when I got things taken away from me. But anyway, that's just my own experience. Let's figure out what she's going through right now. Every time she confiscated my phone, I was swallowed by boredom. Oh yeah, I know I all about that. I didn't have anything to do when I couldn't play. Sometimes, if I had free time, I would try to find the spot where my mom hid my phone. <laughs> but I Too relatable. always failed. But the only thing I knew for sure was that she hid my phone in one specific room. A room with a lot of cabinets filled with stuff and junk. It looks like a locker room. Really hard it's like a storage room. Phone. One day, when my mom hid my phone again, I suddenly came up with an idea. You smart. I asked myself why I hadn't thought of secretly recording her to see where she hid my phone. So that when she- Wait, hold up. How did she get this camera? Did she have like one of those little camcorders? Like how did she put the camera in there and just had it recording the whole time? You know what? Whatever. She was finally done hiding it somewhere. I could go inside and watch the footage. Exactly. Then I could finally get uh, my yeah. phone back for good. <laughs> So, I finally got my phone back, mainly because I needed it for means of communication while in school. Once I got home, I purposely made my mother annoyed until she confiscated it from me. Oh. And that's exactly what she did. But before she confiscated it, I quickly put the camera inside the room when she didn't notice. Oh, you're such a skank. I put the camera in the corner of the room so that I could see everything. I was really excited to know where her secret hiding place was. Finally, she came out of the room, which meant she finished hiding it. Yeah. When she was finally gone, I went inside the room and grabbed my camera. I quickly played the video. 
At first, I looked at the duration of the video. Oh, she's gonna it see some creepy stuff. It was seven minutes long. It must have taken a lot of time for her to hide it. I started to skip until I could see my mom inside the room. I skipped for about six minutes, Ooh. but she still wasn't shown on the screen. I was confused, but I told myself that maybe it happened in the first three minutes and I missed it. Yeah. I went to the beginning of the footage again, but failed to find it. Trying to see if I could see anything here. I was in growing corner. impatient. I played the whole video even though it was long. I finally reached the last few minutes of the video, where I went inside the room Why to am get I getting the camera. Chills? My mother was still not shown. I was really confused. Mm. Why wasn't she in the video? But I was clearly in the video when I came in to get the camera. Why is her mom not I showing up, guys? I was scared at that point. In person, I saw my mom enter and exit the room with my own two eyes. Ooh, the Maybe the camera failed to capture it. Whoa! Whoa, 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 what the hell is that? What is that in the corner of the screen? Pussy! Oh my god! Guys, I'm getting the jeebies, the heebies, I'm getting rabies. I think I am getting rabies because I am foaming at the mouth at that. What is that? But that's impossible. Oh my god, my and she's not even gonna mention it? That Baby girl. Quieter than before. I was stressed and my eyebrows were furrowed. My mom what the hell does that mean? Eyebrows are furrowed. I, I can't even speak English. I don't even know what that means. Mom asked me what was wrong. I got my camera and showed her the footage. I explained it to her as well. She said that maybe the camera cut out the footage, but something was really wrong here. Something was I really wrong. I asked her wrong. if she did, in fact, enter the room, and of course she answered yes. I felt goosebumps all over my skin. That's what I'm feeling right now. Confused. Right now. Right here, this right now. This might not be the best scary story I have, but it is still running through my mind. What happened? Why is my mom not in the footage? Wait, is she not gonna explain that face in the corner? The thing is that in the video, the door opened, but my mom wasn't in the footage. That's the scariest part. Ooh. I feel like the fact that she didn't even mention that face that was right over here. I feel like the it? fact that she didn't even bring this up at all makes it ten times scarier. If she brought up the face, I'd be like, man, get your ugly ass off the camera. But the fact that she didn't even mention that face. Was that face even there the first time? Hold on. I gotta check. One day. Was it even there the first time? Oh, it wasn't. Look, no face, no ugly ass ghost face. And then, ba bam! Oh my God, not you, not you, with your giraffe neck. There, right there. How did that face appear? Is that just there for effect? Is that just there to make the curly pubes on my ball stand up to attention? I don't know, but the fact that it's unexplained. That makes it scary as hell. Next video of today's episode is called My Ex-Colleague Tried to Kill Me. I see two guns right here, so whoever it was had the double stuff. You know, he had the <laughs> boom, boom, boom. So we're going to figure out what this is all about. Back when I was 21 years old, I was a strategic firearms commander. This meant that I led a team into dangerous situations that oftentimes involves hostages or civilians who carried guns or other deadly weapons. At 21 years old? Bro, at 21 years old, I was mad that I got Hot Pocket stains on my button-up shirts. And this guy is leading, like, police forces in, like, this simulation training. What the hell? I had a second-in-command firearms commander working beside me. His name was Callum, and he was hey, my best Hey, Callum. Friend. How's it going, my we guy? We always hung out outside of work. And while on duty, he would always joke around and make us crack a smile, even <laughs> when we were dealing with pretty distressful stuff. <laughs> Really? That's the guy I expect to protect me? A case where a man had possession of a firearm, and we were assigned to take care of it. Callum seemed particularly eager and jumped out of the van before it even came to a full stop. When the rest of the team okay. reached the scene, the man was already shot. Damn! Callum still had the gun in his hand. Soon after, I asked Callum why he was so eager to do it. And then he said he had no specific reason. He was just excited. He was just thirsty for blood. I believed him because he was my best friend. Later on, when I was looking at the man who was shot, I looked him up on social media and realized that he and Callum added each other on Facebook. Upon further investigation, 
I realized that there were thousands of messages sent between the two where Callum revealed sensitive information about several operations. I knew that he killed this man on purpose, but I had no way of proving it. He was taken to court and was sentenced to three years in jail for perverting the court of justice. I testified against him and was no longer his friend. Yikes, ex-friends. When I was 24 years old, I was still on the firearms team. All that happened with Callum was behind me and <laughs> I was happy with my life. One night I went home really late after work. As I walked to my apartment, Ooh. I realized that it was trashed. Knife in the couch, guys. That's when you know it's a done deal. That's a game mode. That's a GG, boys. I called the police and they reported it, but there was not much they could do because I didn't have a CCTV. As I got into bed, I saw that there was a note on my bedside table. Remember me. All it said was, Who with the evil face? Me. That face is so good to evil. I instantly evil. recognized Callum's handwriting. And now that he was out of prison, I thought that he would move on with his life. I was so wrong. This was his revenge. <gasps> the next day, I went to the underground parking lot and I saw that my windscreen was smashed. It was clear that he wasn't over me testifying against him. Not Soon at after, all. after, I also saw him near my apartment. What the? I ran after him, but he ignored <laughs> me and ran away. Bitch made. I tried calling his old number, but it was no longer in service. Then an envelope was sent through my door and it contained hundreds of photos of me at work home and even out with my girlfriend at clubs and restaurants wow these were all taken very recently the last one though was a picture of Callum and I from years ago and on the other side written with a big red marker were the words you're dead well you got to go right to the cops after I you reported see that. this as stalking and hoped he would end up back in prison the police had gone to his listed address but there was no one there in fact all of his bags were packed I knew he was still in the area somewhere though. One day I was by myself in an unmarked car and I saw this Toyota Yaris and it was driving close behind me. It was my gut instinct to get the plate number checked and I was going to. But then I got a priority one announcement on the radio saying there was a crazy man on a bus who had a knife and stabbed someone. I turned on my sirens and blue lights and headed to the accident. As I got on the bus, he was already arrested and the ambulance was already there as well. As I was about to leave the bus, I heard a loud bang, and a man on the bus fell down. Oh! He was shot through the window by a man who was wearing a black hoodie. He immediately ran. Bitch! I ran out of the bus and went to the boot of my car. I got my MP5 SF out, which was a large rifle with sniper capabilities. Oh my god, this man is big dicking it. Like, there's a vein on that gun and everything. That's crazy! I ran after the suspect and radioed in. They gave me an order of critical shot, which meant I could shoot to kill the suspect. He ran through the town center and went to the left. I was worried about public safety as he had a large rifle as well. I realized instead of running after him, I needed to get on a roof and shoot down. I went to this building that had views of the right and left. It took me five minutes and I was worried that he would have run away by now. Yes, smell that? I feel like I smelled the smell. Because this video smells like bullshit! As I got to the roof, I turned my gun to the sniper level. I used the eyepiece to scan, and I saw a man in a black hoodie running. Okay, that's why I smelled that bull, because he was chasing a guy, and then he looked up at a tall building and was like, yeah, I'm gonna go on the roof of that. The fact that he had to go up all those flights of stairs, and he could still find that guy running in a spot, like with that gun, that's what makes it smell like... Like, like, ooh, that smell, that smell. I fired a shot and he fell to the ground. By the time I got there, more armed policemen came to the area. I was shocked to see Callum. You were shocked to he see was Callum. the one who followed me in the car behind me. And that shot in the bus was meant for me, but he missed. Callum was dead. Wow, well, he needed to get good. He missed that? I felt sad, but also relieved that this was all over. The man shot in the bus survived, and I was promoted for my diligent work. I'm still working in the force. All right. Well, I mean, even Callum's mom knew that that was going to be Callum that was shooting in that black hoodie, but you know what? The fact that you were shocked... I'm shocked. Next video of today's episode is called My Uncle Saw My Family's Doppelganger. I'm 21 years old now, 
This happened to my uncle when I was around nine years old. Fuck your uncle. My uncle was living in our house and was staying at our vacant guest room up on the second floor. Okay, 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 okay. He's my dad's cousin, so he was really close to our family. Yeah. My uncle was a morning person. He would always get up at around 4 a.m., drink coffee, and run morning errands around the house. 4 a.m.? Morning person? Bro, you're just creepy at that point. Nobody wakes up at 4 a.m. He also told us that he could killers. see and feel ghosts because he has a third eye. And to give you a little background on our house, it was the very first house that was built on our street. We could sometimes feel something moving around our house, especially at night, but we never really paid attention to it. Do you guys ever wonder that? What was this place like, like 50 years ago? You know, what happened on this exact spot that I'm standing on like 100 years ago? Did people fight and die here right at this spot I'm standing in right now? Like what happened in the place that I'm standing at right now 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago? I always think about that stuff. Maybe I'm just weird. One morning, my uncle woke up at his usual time around 4 a.m. He up. left his room, which was right beside the staircase. Saw my older sister, who was 17 years old at that time, going up the stairs with a cup of coffee in her hand. The weird thing was, he said that my sister was looking down and not showing her face the whole time. Hmm. He greeted her with, good morning, and why are you up so early? He said my sister just kept walking up while looking down and ignoring him. My uncle felt awkward as my sister just walked past him. He ignored it, thinking my sister was in a really bad mood. Yeah. He thought she probably stayed up late studying or something. My uncle went down to grab a cup of coffee when he saw my mother in the living room, ironing some clothes. My uncle was confused about why my mother was up at 4 a.m. and ironing clothes. He tried to talk to her and asked the same thing he asked my sister. Why are you up so early? He noticed that my mother was wearing the same clothes from the night before she went to bed. Whew. So he knew it was her. To his surprise, my mother ignored him. My mother never ignored anyone, which is why he found it strange. Oh, this is My mother was just looking down as she kept ironing. That's when my uncle knew something was off. He knew something was very wrong here. He rushed back upstairs to his room, locked the door, turned off the <laughs> lights, and tried to go back to sleep. I would do all those things, but I wouldn't turn off the light, and I would keep a gun underneath my pillow. He tried to forget about it and woke up again a few hours later. It was around 10 a.m. in the morning when he talked to my mother and my sister about what happened. <laughs> they said they were asleep the whole night, Ugh. and they don't recall waking up at 4 a.m. My uncle was so shocked about what he had just experienced. Someone was copying my mother and sister earlier that morning. I was so scared at that time. I became so paranoid that I might feel or see something odd in our house, but I, I tried not feeling. to think about it too much. I hate that feeling. The night after that situation, my uncle woke up at around 3 a.m. He felt something at the end of his bed, and he saw Whoa! a woman with long hair sitting there. My uncle froze for a while. He didn't know what to do. Oh God, that always he was trembling creeps, like, when he said, right Go here. away. My oh. uncle hid under his blankets. Please don't be under the blanket After with After a few Please minutes, don't. which felt like hours, he looked at the same spot where he saw the woman, and she was gone. Oh, goodness gracious. My uncle slept with the lights on that night. Good man. Smart After man. After that experience, what the hell's that? he thankfully didn't experience anything like it ever again. Whose nasty ass toes are that? Oh my god, so many unexplained little things. Like, whose nasty unclipped toes are those? But guys, oh my goodness, right here? The end of right his here? bed. That reveal and he right saw here? a woman with oh long hair god, sitting there. Good luck sleeping tonight. Toes curled and not in the good way. Last video of today's episode is called Disturbing True Dark Web Horror Story Animated. So let's get it. I was a regular on the chat rooms on the deep web back when I was a sophomore in high school. Literally every day for about five months straight. Before school, after school, after basketball practice, and before bed. I was always on there. I'd chat with this one guy all the time because he seemed really cool. <laughs> He'd always link me to funny videos. And hey, about a that's month the kind of three, people I want to talk it to. It all changed. He would send links to weird rooms, <laughs> then the dark live streams. So one day I was on a stream, and there was a Ooh. lady chained to a bed and gagged. 
then I clicked off of the stream. And you I tried to. to click something else. FBI then the open up type moving. shit. It started to move by itself and click back on the stream with the lady chained down. When it opened back up, the lady was still there. And a man with a potato sack on his head was on the screen. The potato sack only had one eye cut out, and that's all. Lazy ass? Can't even cut out two eyes? There was a table that had a hacksaw, gun, and scissors with a shaving razor. The man spoke into the camera and said, pick one. Everyone picked the scissors and the razor. He then shaved her head. After that, he said, pick another one. And everyone picked a gun. Bro, like... Who are the people commenting those things? Gun, gun, shoot her, bang, bang, like what? Dude, this is not a game. Guys, don't get involved with this shit. This is not a game. He picked it up, held it to her head while the woman was screaming. And then I gained control of the mouse and clicked off of it. Oh my goodness. I was thinking to myself, what am I watching? Then my mouse clicked on another stream. It was the same man with a barrel with what looked like boiling water Okay, in now it. I think you just want to watch I tried this gaining control of the mouse, but I couldn't. Then I heard a different woman crying in the background. <laughs> the camera then zoomed out, and on the screen I saw the barrel, a bat, and a flamethrower. Flamethrower? Where the fuck then did the you get that? Then the masked man asked which one. Let me guess. They're all going to say flamethrower? The chat was split between the boiling water and the flamethrower. Oh my god, the, the flamethrower, man? Come on! I'll be both then. What is this? He rolled the crying woman into the side of the camera, turned the flamethrower on, and aimed it at the barrel. At this point, he had her chained to the wheelchair. The water in the tub was boiling out of control. She started kicking and screaming even more. The man called another guy in the room. They unchained her, picked her up, and threw her toward oh! the barrel. My the screen then went black, but I could clearly hear the woman screaming and splashing. For about two minutes, that's all I heard. Then it stopped. The screen then came back and it was focused on the barrel. The two men just stood there, staring at the camera, breathing heavily. And that woman. I don't know how to explain it, but it was a terrible sight. Then the stream ended. I closed out of everything, and I sat there in silence for a while. Honestly, that wasn't my last time on the dark web because again, I honestly enjoyed it. Plot twist. Plot twist of all plot twist. M. Night Shyamalan didn't even see that coming. This fool enjoyed that? The whole time he was struggling. Ew, I have no control over my mouse. And he enjoyed that now? Wow, man. Wow, the stone's on you, huh? There are a lot of people out there like me. More than you think. Be careful about going on the deep or the dark web. Damn. He really enjoyed that. All right, guys. That is going to do it for this episode of me reacting to animations and just talking to you guys. I think that's my favorite part of these videos is just like sharing my experiences, my opinions, and then reading you guys' own experiences and opinions in the comment section. So just keep them coming because I do enjoy reading them. Like when I'm laying down, I'll be scrolling through and just reading you guys' experiences. And that's a big like time killer for me. Like I enjoy reading what you guys have to say. Also, let me know of any other animation channels that do this type of thing. I will try to hit them up and get some permission but shout out again to wansi entertainment always coming through in the clutch letting me react to the videos go check them out if you want to see their whole library of videos but if you guys want to see more episodes of this series in the future make sure you guys give this video one big fat like and tell a friend today that jay from the cub scouts is that dude